Hey, what's up guys? It is Psycho or Sam here and welcome back to my channel guys and today I'm here with a brand new episode of C Sharp Tutorials in Unity. I'm still unsure about the name of this series but if you have any feedback regarding that, the name of the series that we are right now making, uh, make sure to leave a comment down below and let me know if you have any new, if, if you have any other name in your mind. But um, in this video we are specifically going to look at NPC uh, interaction with the player or perhaps the player is going to be able to interact with the NPC. Uh, we are going to use the standard assets from the Unity and um, if you want to import the same package that I have right here, you can just right click inside of your project tab, pick import package and then select characters. And then you just let it import and then you will have the same files and folders like I do here. Um, besides that, I just have a standard Unity scene, so I created a new scene, deleted the main camera because we are obviously going to add a rigid body FPS controller, which is going to have its own camera, so we don't really need that um, camera from the standard scene. But I do keep the directional light and I do keep the skybox because they really just don't matter. And nor do these models that we're going to be using matter, but you can use any model that you want, any package you want, but the codes are the only important part and I am going to teach you guys that in this video. So I want to start off by um, placing a rigid body FPS controller into my scene. So I just go to standard assets, characters, first person controller, prefabs, and then I pick rigid body FPS controller, drag it inside of my scene. And there we go. So what I want to do is I just want to start by playing the game and making sure that I can move. Uh, jump is not very important for this tutorial, but Make sure that you can move because that's the only important part. And when you place a rigid body FPS controller, it's obviously going to be a little bit down below the terrain or the plane. And um, I, by the way, I forgot to say, I do have a simple plane here as a ground. So I can actually name it for ground so that we can keep an eye on that. But um, what I was trying to say is that when you place a rigid body FPS controller down on your scene, um, it's going to be a little bit triggering inside of the plane itself or whatever ground you have. So just make sure to move it up a little bit so you can see the bottom of these green lines, which is a collider. So that's the only important part. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename rigid body FPS controller to player. And then I am also going to pick a tag, which is going to be a player because this is obviously going to be tagged as a player. Uh, since we are actually going to be playing around with the tags a little bit because this video is uh, mostly going to focus on tags actually, because we are going to check if the player is triggering with the NPC. Uh, if it's not triggering with the NPC and so on and so on. So make sure to just tag it as player. Uh, it's very, very important or else it won't work. By the way, as an NPC, I thought that we could use like a cube or something very similar. And I thought that cube would be actually a perfect match for this. So I'm just going to place down a cube or perhaps create a new cube by going to game object, 3D object, and then cube. So now we have cube uh, across the scene or across the plane ground object that we have. I can actually move it a little bit closer because we don't really have it have to have it that far um, since the player is just supposed to like walk up to it and then interact with uh, whatever action we give it to actually pick through so it's not really going to be that much of a distance that it has to walk but whatever um, what I also want to do is I want to create a new tag so I just go to tag once again click on untagged and then I click add tag so and then I click this little plus icon or button here and um, now I can enter a new tag so I just say NPC because we want to make sure that this ta this object is actually called for NPC but also tagged as an NPC so that we can check it through code soon and uh, when we're checking for trigger options so I also want to call this for NPC just to you know uh, keep an eye out for the object itself so that we don't really lose track of it and um, Next up, I also want to, oh, by the way, I forgot to add, I did add the tag, but I didn't tag it right now. So after you add the actual tag in t inside of the tags list, you need to go back to untagged and then go to NPC. So you have to set the tag after actually creating it, which is a little bit stupid IMO, but really Unity can't, I don't really think that there is a fix for this because you just have to make sure that everything is working by yourself. So. But it's not that very, that important as long as you don't really forget about it. Now what I want to do is add it a new box collider to the NPC objects. No matter what kind of object you're using or shape you're using for your NPC, it doesn't really matter. Um, you could use a box collider for checking for trigger options. So I will add a box collider, a new one, 
Um, note that we have two now because one is going to be um, the size of the cube itself or perhaps the model that you're using. If you're using something else, it's probably going to be a mesh collider unless you're using like a capsule. Um, so this one we don't really have to touch at all. Uh, what we want to do is we add a new box collider and then we edit this. So what I want to edit is basically just make the size a little bit bigger than the actual shape of the object because we want to make sure that the player is going to walk inside of these green lines so you can see which is a collider and then we want to make sure that the player is actually inside of these lines and then that means that the player is triggering with the object so that's a very very important thing to do um, I just kind of make it uh, change the scale and make it a little bit bigger on every aspect or every side of the object including the top because I want to make sure that the player, even if he comes from behind and then interacts with the NPC, or at least tries to, I don't want it to fail, obviously. So I want that task to be completely ready. Um, now, I think this is pretty good. If it seems to be way too small, I could come back and edit it, but um, it should be fine. So I just click this button again, and then it disables the edit collider lines that I dragged. And now I also want to check the is trigger button here, or perhaps just click the check itself. So that we, and this means this makes sure that if we have it is trigger, it means that this collider is not going to block any other object. So if I were to add a rigid body to this and then delete the first collider, which doesn't have is trigger, or perhaps if I just check is trigger and then add a rigid body, it's going to fall through the ground itself so it's not gonna block itself from another, any other collider and that's the whole point we want to make it make check it because we want the player to be able to run inside of these boxes uh, or perhaps the collider itself so yeah that's pretty much it and um, we are done with the NPC so I want to go to player and do the practically the same thing um, I just want to add a box collider enable it so that I can see the side of it and um, I do have a capsule, capsule collider on this because it's not a box. So the shape is different, obviously. And um, I just want to make sure that the box is box collider is a little bit bigger, obviously, than the cups, capsule itself. So that we can actually walk inside of these lines once again. And this is also going to be its trigger. So we want to make sure that this is working. There we go. And I could actually just increase the um, vertical vertical scale here a little bit not too much it's not really needed um, yeah now that I'm done with it I click this edit collider again and it disables the lines and then I just click on is trigger which is the same as we did before now that we are done here I am going to go to my assets folder here inside of the project tab and then um, I am going to create a new C sharp script so I just go right click create C sharp script and then name it for player um, you can name the script for whatever you want, but I actually you can do it. There is nothing to think of. Um, I was gonna say when I refer to the script as player, like I will use the name player when I say, well, I'm going to the player script. So if you name it something else, just make sure that you keep an eye out for that, so you don't really enter the wrong script and you know edit that or overwrite it. But um, that could be that could be bad. So I just open the script up now. Nothing too special. And Visual Studio is gonna take its time, and there we go. Okay, so I want to make my necessary edit there. There we go, and then I want to delete these two um, voids that we already have by default. So I'm gonna create them by myself. Um, now I want to create a new object that is going to be called Private Game Object um, NPC, or perhaps uh, Triggering NPC. So there we go. Also, if you're going to use the same names as me for variables for the sake of this, this tutorial or guide or whatever, make sure that you use the same uh, writing method, which means that, you know, triggering is spelt in lowercase letters and then N is bigger and then NPC or PC is smaller uh, or lowercase. Uh, just to make sure that you know there is no confusion about that but if you ever like receive any errors or so just let me know in the comments down below and I'll fix it for you so um, I also want to have a new boolean which is also going to be private because we don't really need to see these inside of the inspector if you if you didn't know if you make these public booleans or public object you're gonna be able to see them inside of this inspector right here 
but we don't really need to because it's going to be backend only. So I just want to say private uh, bool and um, triggering. So triggering is going to be the boolean that we're going to check if the player is actually triggering with the NPC, meaning that they are colliding. So then that means that we are going to be able to give the task to the player like, well, you can talk to this NPC or, you know, whatever task, like perhaps attach a quest or something. So I just want to void start. I'm not sure if we're going to use this void at all. I just want to make sure that I do have it by standard so that I don't really have to create it afterwards. So I also want to have void update. And most importantly, I want to have void on trigger enter. And then inside of parentheses, I write collider other. There we go. And I could just copy this or else you can write it by yourself. But I copy paste and instead of void on trigger enter for the second one, I say on trigger exit. So it's literally just on trigger enter and then on trigger exit. Uh, the first one means that we are going to check when the player is actually triggering with or colliding perhaps with the NPC, but we also need a method to check if it is actually not colliding with the NPC anymore so that when the player walks away from the NPC, he's not going to be able to collide with it or interact with it in any main. So, and for that, we use the void on trigger exit. So, and um, instead of on trigger enter, I want to say if other.tag is equal to um, NPC curly brackets, and I want to say triggering if it's true and then triggering NPC is equals other that game object. So what this means is that we are checking if the other, which is a collider, if the other collider or object that we are colliding with has a tag, which is called the NPC, then we are going to set the variable triggering to true because we are obviously triggering with the NPC then. And then we are going to set the triggering NPC game object to whatever object we are actually colliding with. Uh, it's really simple. It's just simple methodology for coding. And um, I'm going to copy this and then paste it inside of on trigger exit. And then instead of having triggering equals to true, I want to have it false in the second one. And then triggering NPC, I am going to set it to null instead of other dot game object like the first one. So there we go. And this is the same method or the same logic here. We are just setting literally the first one we are setting triggering to true so that we actually are letting the computer or the game know that we are actually the player is triggering with the NPC and he can handle or whatever. And then when he walks away from the NPC, we're just saying, well, no longer triggering and triggering NPC is now null, meaning zero, like nothing at all, because obviously he's not triggering with anyone yet, uh, right now. So that's pretty much it. And um, instead of inside of void update, actually I can delete void start queue. It's not needed anymore. <laughs> I just realized that. So um, instead of inside of void update, I just want to make a little bit spaces here so that we can code freely. And um, I want to say if triggering, then I want to say print player is triggering with a space. Oh, I said W T H. There we go. With space and then um, end the equation. And then I want to say plus and triggering NPC. So I'm just saying the or calling the name of the uh, triggering NPC object that we're already triggering with. So now I want to go back to Unity and make sure that this is actually working out. If not, I'm going to fix it. Uh, it should be working out because we're not having any problems. I want to enable the console window here so that I can see when it prints out. There we go, it's working. So it says player is triggering with NPC, which is the name of the object that we are already calling for. So if I were to change the name for NPC game object, like NPC2, and then start playing the game, it's obviously going to say player is triggering with NPC2. So that's a really slick way of handling information and names in Unity, if you didn't know about that. All right, so now that this is working and we have a proof in our hands, <laughs> I just want to clear that and I'm going to go back to Visual Studio and um, instead of having a print here, now I can actually edit something to uh, or edit this perhaps to whatever action that I want to give the player. So I could actually make sure that a text pops up when the player is actually triggering. So what I want to do is I want to go back to Unity and by the way, I did delete the part of print 
there. So make sure to delete that or remove that line. And um, these are just warnings about the variables not being used. So they're not very important. If you get them, don't be scared. As long as they're not compiler errors or something that is very, very important as a warning, uh, it's not going to be a problem. So sh we shouldn't worry about that. But um, what I want to do is to actually add a new text to my uh, game. So what I'm going to go is UI and then say text, add that. And um, I am going to move the text to, oops, not z axis x axis there we go i want it pretty much in the middle uh like that i should that should work there we go it does um yeah i could keep it on the middle or i could just move it up here yeah that's actually better uh perhaps like this there we go it's not really important where you have it i just want to make sure that this is actually going to let the player know that we are triggering with an npc and we can click a button to whatever uh, do whatever we want. So, um, so I just created a canvas which was automatically created by going to UI and then creating a text object. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this text object, not the canvas, but the text object for... Um, actually, we could keep the name text. It doesn't really matter because we're not going to use that. But I want to go to the text component inside of it and then in, uh, inside of text, I just want to enter um, triggering with um npc or click e to talk or something <laughs> something like that or click e to print so we're what we're gonna do is we're gonna give the task to the player that is going to print inside of our console when we actually click e so that's what we're gonna do and we obviously have to be uh triggering with the npc to do that so there we go uh, that's kind of the middle. I hope nobody with OCD watches this. <laughs> uh, that could be a little bit trouble, uh, trouble or problematic. But um, that's pretty much done. And what I want to go back is to... I want to go back to Visual Studio, create a new private or actually public game object this time. And um, it's going to be public game object. And then I'm going to call this for NPC text. There we go. NPC text. Nothing too special. Um, I want to go back to Unity and then I want to highlight my player inside of the inspect or hierarchy so that I can see the component inside of the inspector. And you can see that the object or the component itself has a new field called for NPC text, which is what we created. What I want to do now is I want to go, uh, if you have folded canvas, make sure to unfold it so that you can see the text object here. And um, I want to drag this text object inside of NPC text. You don't really have to drag the canvas, so it's not really important. But you just have to drag and drop the text uh, inside of this. So now I can go back to Visual Studio and under if triggering, we're going to set NPC text equals or um, that set true. Or wait, was it set true? Sorry, set active. I meant set active is equals to true. There we go. And then I have an else. And there we go. NPC text dot set active is false. So I got an error here. Can I assign set active because it's a method group? Um, well, well, that's interesting. It was set active before, but cannot implicitly. Um, it was set active. Maybe it was a lowercase s. No, it was not. Hold on, I'm actually gonna check this out. That's weird. Oh, I'm stupid. It was. Set active and then inside of parentheses is true. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't. I, I was. I, I actually forgot that. So, um, what I want to do is instead of if triggering, I want to make sure that NPC text dot set active is set to true inside of these parentheses, and then it, um, underneath else, I want to have NPC text once again set active to false this time. Oops, not didn't mean to move that. There we go. Um, the reason is that obviously if we're triggering with the player or the, the player is triggering with the NPC, we obviously want to be able to set, see the text itself. But then if we're not triggering, we don't want to be able to see the text anymore. So I could go back to Unity and try this out, but I'm sure that it's going to work, so it shouldn't be a problem. So, oops, wrong button, sorry. Um, what I want to do here, uh, I want to go back to NPC text.setActive is true underneath triggering. 
and then say if input dot get key down key code dot e, which is the button that we uh, told the player to click if he's triggering with the NPC. And I just want to say something like print congratulations. This is so much cliche. Uh, congratulations. There we go. You are triggering with the NPC. Or like congratulations, you have activated the quest. Something like that. Something cringy like that. <laughs> um, we could skip using these curly brackets here because this is only one line statement. But if you were to add something more, like instead of using a print, maybe you like start a new quest or give the player the ability to talk to the NPC, you obviously want to use these curly brackets. So I'm not really going to remove them for, for the sake of this tutorial. But um, if I was just going to use, if I were to only use the print, I would not have these curly brackets because they're not needed for one line statement. So, but yeah, we can go back to Unity and we can actually try this out. Um, so first and foremost, obviously the text is not appearing and I can click E right now and it's not going to print anything in the console because we're not triggering with the NPC. So if I get closer or approach the NPC, the text is going to pop up. So this is working. The trigger is going working right now. And then it tells me to click E to print. So I click E and it prints whatever we said. Congratulations, you have activated the quest. So this is pretty much working and um, you can literally do anything you want and to in order to change this print to whatever you actually want to do, you just go back to Visual Studio or whatever compiler you're using and underneath input.getKeyDownKeyCode.E you just change this to whatever you want to do. Uh, like I could literally destroy um, MPs or trick triggering NPC. <clears throat> that means that I'm going to destroy the NPC object itself when I actually trigger and then click on E. So we can try that out and boom, it's deleted. So it was lying to me when it said click E to print. Um, and the, vi the, the triggering is not set to false here. So when the triggering NPC is destroyed, for some reason, it bugs out and doesn't really set the triggering back to false, but even though we're not triggering with it anymore, uh, even though it's destroyed. But I guess it's instance and the, or the present instance is actually still saved in Unity. So what we could do is just set triggering to false underneath that. Go back to Unity and we can try that out. <clears throat> and um, we just click that and boom, it's destroyed together with the text itself. Well, the text is not destroyed, but it's disabled now. So, and if obviously, if you want to change the key code itself, like you want to click A, S or whatever, you just go to input, get key down, key code, and then edit this E right here. So R, T, Y, whatever I want to use. But E is like the default button that you use in games for interaction. So I'm happy with it. But yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, I know that this was really, really easy, but I can actually, I'm going to save this project so that I can come back to this later, uh, which means that I can make a tutorial where I use the same code. So you don't really have to like recode it or whatever, uh, or change your code. So I could come back to this and make it new tutorial where I like teach out how you can actually interact with the uh, NPC in a little bit more advanced way, like enabling a menu where you can, or like a dialogue, having a dialogue with the NPC itself. So I could teach you guys how to do that too. So if you want to watch more videos like this and see how that could be done specifically, let me know in the comments down below, or if you have any other suggestions, feedback for me to improve, etc. let me know in the comments down below. Uh, if you found this video helpful and if you would like to support me a little bit more, like the video. It really helps me out a lot. And subscribe if you want to stay up to tune and I will see you guys later.